Hello and welcome to the Monday, January 16th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Brussels, Belgium. Xavier wrote on Friday about backup files on web servers. Now, backup files, as he points out, are a good thing as long as they are outside your document route. And the reason he wrote about it is that he's seeing recently a lot of scans for common backup file names against his web applications. And yes, while this is not new and cutting edge in any way, it's one of those simple operational issues that's often overlooked. Now, while we're talking about simple operational issues that aren't new but still being exploited in Apache, you often find the server status page still enabled. That feature does list recent connections to the Apache server. And with that, of course, you often leak confidential URLs. A new very simple tool illustrates that if hackers certainly are still looking for server status pages, this tool just keeps polling the server status page, uh, extracts all URLs, and then creates a SQLite database that of course can be used for example as an input for a vulnerability scanner to further exploit any URLs that are being found via that method. And last week there was a big article in The Guardian about a possible weakness in the increase of WhatsApp. Now, WhatsApp uses the same protocol as Signal. And of course, both tools are heavily used by individuals who are trying to hide their conversations from governments. Turns out that this particular weakness actually was discovered and discussed first back in April 2016. So a little bit less than a year ago. And it's really more a design compromise in the application than a backdoor. The problem, of course, with all of these crypto applications is how do you initially verify that you're talking to the right person at first contact when you are receiving whatever public key certificate or so is used to verify the sender. Now, SSL uses certificate authorities. We talked a lot about how that doesn't work. With WhatsApp, you have the option once you meet the other party party in person to compare a security code that is being created by the application. So let's assume that you met that person, you compare the security code, everything is good, or you have some history communicating with that person and established that way that the key they're using is correct and authentic. Now, the next thing that may happen is that your communication partner has to reinstall the application. Now, when you reinstall the application, a new device, of course, a new key pair is created, the public keys again sent to WhatsApp. And WhatsApp will not warn you that the public key changed in this case. And that's the problem here. There is an option there you can enable that you will be warned. Of course, be aware that as users change devices, you may get some false positive alerts here. Another twist to this is that let's say you try to send a message to the other side, but the sending failed. The other side was offline at the time later they come online with a new key the old message is now automatically being re-encrypted using that new key that uh, they're offering so again no warning here by default simple fix here enable these warnings and of course you always should be very careful in verifying these keys the first time you use them to make sure that you're communicating with the right individual same problem with SSL. In SSL, if you're clicking the I'm okay with the invalid certificate message, then of course you have no guarantee that someone didn't replace the key in a man in the middle situation. These attacks, however, do not allow an attacker to decrypt past communication. So this would only then affect messages being sent after a malicious key is introduced. When we're talking about defense in depth, we're often talking about network devices, but of course that concept also applies to software. And Microsoft has an interesting article how some of the defense in depth techniques that were introduced in Windows 10 anniversary edition did fool recent Saturday exploits. 
They're looking at two vulnerabilities that were patched last November and then look at how Windows 10 Anniversary Edition would prevent exploits that were released against those vulnerabilities from running. It's a pretty nice insight into sort of the inner architecture of Windows 10 from a defensive point of view. I would in particular recommend that developers uh, read this in order to better understand what can and probably should be done in order to prevent exploits from working. And talking about exploits, there's a nice write-up about one of the vulnerabilities that Adobe fixed last week with its update for Acrobat and PDF Reader. The problem here was that it was possible for an attacker to inject JavaScript into PDFs that allow the pre-filling of forms. Essentially, the way these PDFs work is you have a PDF form and then you can specify a file that's being used to preload data into the form. And that can be done just on a URL if you are loading that PDF from a website. So with that pre-fill file, of course, you can now inject JavaScript into the PDF and with that you are open to all of the different JavaScript exploits. Now the pre-fill file has to be loaded same origin. However, it turns out that Adobe Acrobat happily followed redirects. So that can be used then to redirect it to download that PDF from another site with an open redirect vulnerability. Also, it doesn't really check the file type correctly. So if the attacker is able to upload any file to that particular website, then the attacker may be able to use that file to inject malicious code. Well, that's it for today. Again, remember Monday evening, we do have our community night here at Sans Prussel. So if you're in the area, uh, feel free to stop by and listen uh, to Didier talk about some of his work. Tuesday, I'll be talking about Internet of Things. Uh, please check the Sans website for details and particular for the Tuesday talk. I'll need to know ahead of time if you show up, so drop me a message. Well, that's it. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.